Hey folks, I'm Amit Logic, and on today's episode of the Xbox Collector, we're going to review the brand new Halo 3 toys and see how they stack up with the toys from the other two games. We're also going to preview the brand new vehicles that have just come out by Todd McFarlane and his brand new Halo 3 toy line, right here on the Xbox Collector. The Halo 3 vehicle line features a couple different vehicles. The Ghost, the Warthog, and new to the Halo series this time around would be the Brute Chopper. One of the clear advantages of the Halo 3 vehicle line compared to the Halo 1 and Halo 2 vehicle line is that these come with display stands, making it really easy to display your vehicles in cool action poses. On these stands, I can easily rotate the Ghost to go in any direction I want it. To the side, turn it to the left, turn it to the right all on the flexible display stand. It's pretty sturdy actually too and adds a great look to your collection. The Warthog is just as cool as it has been in the other toy lines except miniaturized a bit. These are one of the ones that you can actually take off the display stand and display without it. It does have fully functional wheels. You can move it back and forth like normal. So if you don't like the display stand and you want to play around with your Warthog, you definitely can. Just pop it off the cap and you're good to go. There's no mini Master Chief in these this time around, but it doesn't really matter because all the artwork here is featured on the vehicle itself. As you can see, just pop that back in and we're ready to go with displaying this thing again. And finally, my least favorite vehicle from Halo 3, off the series one of these vehicles, is the Brute Chopper. It is captured in pretty much every detail, but to me, the Brute Chopper wasn't very pleasant looking in the first place. So, the vehicle line kind of represents the same thing. There's really not much to it, and out of the three, I can definitely say that it's my least favorite uh, rendition of all the vehicles as well. Overall, the Halo 3 Series 1 vehicles gets a 4 out of 5. I really wish they would have chose something else out of the Brute Chopper, but then again, that's just a matter of preference. What kind of collections do you viewers at home have? Make a video showing off your collection and send it to us here at the Xbox Collector. We'll play your video on the next episode and show off just how cool your collection is. Before we get into our review of the brand new Halo 3 toys, I wanted to talk about the difference of scale between the Halo 1, 2, and 3 action figures. Master Chief on the left from Halo 1, Master Chief from Halo 2 on the right, and then the brand new Master Chief from Halo 3 right in the middle. As you can see, there's about 6 inches of difference between these guys. While the Halo 3 figures are smaller, they definitely have a bit more detail than the other two figures combined. One advantage of them being scaled down is the fact that they're easier to display and don't take up as much display room like the other figures do. Series 1 of the Halo 3 action figures features a variety of campaign characters from good guys to bad guys and a couple different versions of some multiplayer variants of the Spartans. As you can see with the Master Chief here, his weapon is securely placed on his back, just like in the game. Todd McFarlane did a cool design where he placed holes around the actual action figures themselves so you can take off or store... The Halo 2 toys definitely beat the Halo 3 toys in terms of flexibility and articulation. As you can see, the Chief can move around decently, but if you've ever actually picked up any of the Halo 2 toys, you know you could place them in pretty much any motion. Chief is doing the robot here, and as you can see, he's kind of stiff. Which is alright, if you're mostly displaying these, it's not too much of a big deal. Demonstrated here is the actual peg hole where you can plug a peg in to store a weapon. You could also stick a grenade here. The chief actually has a couple weapons on his side of those legs too, so you can store grenades or plasma rifle, plasma pistol, etc. The accuracy of the actual Master Chief figure itself is second to none and definitely the best out of the three. Our favorite little alien guys are back. The grunts return coming with a plasma pistol and a needler. You can also remove their methane tank in the back, and their face mask is also removable as well. These also include the peg holes if you want to uh, put the plasma pistol on the side or the needler on the side. And out of all of them, these are the easiest guys to uh, get the weapons in their hands. 
Because of the shape of their feet, these guys can be a little hard to stand up, but a little quick positioning and they'll be standing up in no time. Just be careful not to knock them over. Series 1 also features the Jackal, one of the most annoying enemies in Halo 2 and Halo 3. It also extremely well detailed, has a couple different pegs for weapons, so you could probably store uh, quite an arsenal on this guy. As you would expect, he comes with the sniper rifle. The biggest figure by far is the Brute, which makes sense as they're the biggest in the game. They come with a gravity hammer that you can pull off the bottom and place through the Brute's hand. As you can see, the armor detail on this is pretty amazing. McFarland definitely didn't skip out on any of the details for this one. Definitely probably the coolest enemy out of the bunch of them. It's too bad they didn't add a little sound effect where when you hit the hammer it made a little voom noise with it. And finally, one of the figures I've been waiting to get my hands on for a very long time is Cortana. She comes with a lighted base. As you can see, she's pretty well detailed too, even though she's kind of odd looking. The base itself takes two little batteries. The foot pegs are used so you can place Cortana on it. The batteries go there. Just flip the switch on the bottom and bam, there's your LED lights. Go ahead and place the thing down and as you can see, Cortana's gonna light up pretty well here. This looks pretty cool when you have this on display. In my actual studio, I have her on when I'm working on studio projects and it just adds an overall cool effect to the room. Out of a five star review, I give the Halo 3 figures four stars out of five stars with my complaint being that the hands are often too hard to move in order to get the weapons in them. And the weapons aren't super durable, so you could probably easily break the weapons if you're not careful. This wraps up the review. Be sure to tune in on the next episode of the Xbox Collector, and be sure to check 360style.net and onlinelogic.com for all the latest game reviews, community news, and more.